is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall be. morning family we are really grateful to god that he has spared our lives i'm so happy to be here with you and i thank you all so much for joining us this morning it's very early in the morning but it's another beautiful day we want to encourage you as you go throughout the course of the day to be praying one for the other if you are able to pray with a friend a family member or a co-worker please do so this is indeed a special day and we really want to take all our requests to the Lord. I want to encourage you that if you have a request, then you can also go and post it in the Garden of Prayer or you can place it in the chat during the service this morning. Um, I also want to say to you that as we go through the course of the day, I want to advise you that the members of the stewardship department and the prayer ministry they will be praying for your requests as well. You're encouraged to fast until noon today once you're able to do so. So God bless you. Enjoy the service this morning. I want to remind you that we have our fasting and prayer every last Thursday of each month. So you can place it in your diary and ensure that you're here. Do enjoy the day and the service. Good morning. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we thank you for this another day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we can come to you in prayer. Father, we pray that you forgive us of all our sins. And Lord, as we come worshiping you this morning, I pray, Father, that you'll accept our prayers. Mighty God, I pray that you will Cover us under your blood as we go throughout this day. I pray, Father, that you'll help us, Lord, that we'll have a good worship experience and that as we worship, Father, I pray, Father, that you will help us not to keep it to ourselves, but to tell others of your goodness and your mercy. These are all the mercy that I ask in your precious name. Amen. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father and our God, 
this morning as we approach your throne. We first of all want to thank you for being our Father, our provider, our protector. I want to thank you, O oh God, once again for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on Calvary's cross for all of us so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. As we come to you this morning, we want to ask you, Lord, for your forgiveness. We ask, Lord, that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness as we see your face. Lord, this morning, we come to you in this passion, this prayer meeting that the stewardship department has planned. First of all, Lord, we want to thank you for calling us into your service and making us towards. So we ask this morning, Lord, that you will help us to use the talents that you have given to us according to your will. Each and every one of us, Lord, you have given us a special talent. And we ask, Lord, that you will help us to use it to carry out your great commission. We ask, dear Father, that as we live in a world that we are competing for time. Time is one of the things, Lord, we complain about so often. Don't have enough time to do all sorts of things. But this morning, Lord, as we come to you as stewards, we ask, Lord, that you will help us to plan our time in such a way that we will have enough time for you, enough time to carry out your work, enough time, Lord, to witness to others so that they too can come to know you as Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord, also for the treasure which you have blessed us with. Lord, we pray that we will give so that your storehouse will never be empty so that we can have all the resources to carry out your great commission. Lord, we pray that you will help us to be good stewards. So that when you come, Lord, you will not find us wanting. Lord, we continue this prayer to ask you, Lord, to remember Haiti. Lord, a country that is very near to us. But you see what is going on in that country, Lord. And this morning, once again, we ask you to manifest yourselves to those people. We ask, Lord, that those who know you, and we have no doubt, Lord, that they are Adventists, they are other Christians, that you will remind them that you have promised that you will never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, I pray that you will help them in their time of despair, in this time of bewilderment, that they will just hold on to your unchanging hand. I pray, dear Father, that you will send your Holy Spirit to comfort them and to protect them. We pray, dear God, that you will provide for them food, shelter, and clothing. I pray, dear God, that everyone in that country will somehow you will reveal yourself to them in a very special way so that the situation will come under control. As we look on, Lord, help us as Christians, as those of us who believe in your second coming, we realize that we are living in the last days. And so we are to look up because of redemption to right now. We come back, Lord, to our own country, Jamaica. You see and know the crime situation. We pray, Lord, but it is not getting any better. We know, Lord, that this is one of the signs of the end. So help us, dear Father, to find ways and means to witness to those who are committing this crime so that their hearts can be turned to you. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will just protect our children, protect the elderly, Lord, because these gunmen, these criminals, oh God, they seek to devour even those who are helpless. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will 
somehow reveal yourself to them and help them, their father, to turn their hearts to you. This morning, Lord, as we come to you, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you will remember our church can cut. We have been carrying out your great commission. And from time to time, from year to year, we have changed our strategy so that we can be more impactful. This year, Lord, we have ventured out on friendship and medical evangelism to be used in your method, your method of reaching the people where they are, of meeting their needs, and then bid them to come. We place this, this program into your hands and ask that as each department plans honor this theme, friendship and medical evangelism, we pray for the activities. We pray that you bless the activities so that they will be done to the honor and glory of your name and that souls will come to know you as we carry out these activities. We place the evangelistic activities in your hands. This upcoming one, Lord, that will begin on April 21st, embracing health and hope in the end time. We put the plans into your hands, Lord, and ask that you will bless them. We put the presenter into your hands, Elder Freckleton, and ask that as he prepares the presentation, that you will bless them, that you will put the words and the thoughts in his mind. I pray for the members who will be inviting their friends. I pray, dear God, that you will prepare the hearts of those who will be invited so that they will come. We pray, dear God, for all the activities that we have planned that surrounds this evangelistic series, that you will bless them, that you will um, help us to carry them out in such a way that the series will be successful. Again, Lord, we place the entire church membership into your hands and ask that as we go through the rest of the year with these activities, that you will guide us. Help us to listen to the Holy Spirit as we plan and help us, dear Father, that at the end of it all, all praises and all the glory will be yours to Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. The scripture reading this morning that we shall be meditating upon is found in Psalm 84. Psalm 84. And I will read in your hearing from the New King James Version. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still be praising you. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain covers it. They go forth from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen. This morning, I want to share a testimony with you about a leap of faith. From 10 years old, I sensed the calling of God on my life to come into pastoral ministry. 
So I said, Lord, whatever your will, I will always let your will be done. So right through primary school, I can remember I was called a pastor. Right throughout my high school years, I was called a pastor. But having left high school, I diverted. I said, well, God, I can't see this. So I diverted and started to work. I worked as a civil servant. I worked in two ministries prior to coming into pastoral ministry. But while I was there as a civil servant first, my final place was the Minister of Commerce. And I thought that this was it. I literally ran away from God, as it were. But then I thought that this was it. I got married. Children started to born. And then I said, well, this is it. I was comfortable. I was climbing the ladder of success in the ministry. Until I lost a loved one. And all this time, during marriage, during child rearing, I told God, I still sense the sen a feeling of God. But I said to God, now that I have no money, I'm not going this route. And it so happened, I lost a loved one. And it was right in the cemetery, November 16, right in that cemetery. After all the mourning, everything, I heard the Lord said, this is where I need you when there's no money. I used all the resources that I know I had and buried that loved one. And I went back to work the Monday morning, sat at my desk, and I downloaded the form for NCU. By this time, brothers and sisters, there was no way I thought how I could manage this. No funds. But in my morning, I said, God, let me respond to you. And brothers and sisters, I downloaded the form, sent in the application. And this was November. Surprisingly, I got a call from NCU. You can start in January. And I said, January? I was now expecting to start the semester. But long and short of that, I said, give me some time. So I started the semester. While starting the semester, that was August, but the preparatory period, I said, Lord, you will provide this. You're going to do all of this. I am just going to go according to how you said it. By this time, Nadine was not amused when I told her that this was where I was heading. She was not amused. Being now a young father, young husband, how are you going to go to school with one income, her income only? But I said, I am going to trust in the Lord. My brothers, my sisters, having done all of what needed to be done, went on campus, going through all the rounds. The final place to go was finance. And I said, God, you are going to work this out. To get into the finance department, now you need a numbering system. So I got number 37. I remembered 37 distinctly. So when I got number 37, I was told that if you can verify that you are a member of the church, you can get a 10% discount. Now, remember, I had no funds. What I had, I know, just could not... What I had was two Jamaican dollars. She knows this story well. Two Jamaican dollars. And I said, this was what I'm going to use as my leap of faith. But having heard about a 10% discount, I called my pastor at the Constant Spring Church at the time. And I told him my dilemma. He knew what I was doing. And he said, well, you can get the letter, but how are you going to get it? I said, well... I can come Kingston for it. I drive, so I can. I jumped in my car, drove up. And remember, I got 37. By the time I got back, came, left Mandeville, came to Kingston, got back to Mandeville. They were at number 34. So I went in. And going through all that, next, 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 there was 
distinctly some some pointers. 100%, those who are paying 100%, those who are paying 80% go to this side. Those who are being sponsored go to this side. Student loan, go to this side. I know I had number 37 and the person beside me would have gotten 36. And I heard when she said, I she was speaking to herself loudly. She said she was short $5,000. And she knows that she will be turned down. And I said to myself, then if you have $5,000 short and I only have two Jamaican dollars, no, there's no chance. When it was my time, I went to the 80% line. And the person outlined all the courses that I would have registered for, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, may I have your receipt? Since now you're in the 80% line, may I have your receipt? And I went in my shirt pocket, brothers and sisters, took that $2 from my pocket, placed it on her desk. And she asked me three times, where is your receipt? And I gave her that receipt. And then she said, I am going to give you, this was August. I'm going to give you until the ending of September. I'm going to register you, but I'm going to give you until the ending of September to come with your receipt to verify that you have been registered for class. Brothers and sisters, that was what I wanted. I got registered with my $2. When I called Nadine and I told her, she said, well, this is what the Lord asks you to do. Watch this. Ending of August, I should, ending of September, I should come back with my receipt. My brothers, my sisters, I know now that I did not, I was not fully registered. So, in order for you to have access to your online assignments, et cetera, et cetera, you must be fully registered. And one day, out of curiosity, that was before the ending of September, I decided to go online. And I went online like other students would have gone online. And what I saw at my name, when you owe, the balance jumps out in you. Your name comes up in red and the balance flashed at you. But when you hold nothing, it's in green. And what I saw at my when my name jumped out at me, it was in green. So out of curiosity, I rushed to the finance department. And I said, I'm here to check on my account. What happened? And when the person told me, we're looking at your account and you hold nothing. I said, what happened? Because I know what requirements I needed to do to come back by the August, by the ending of September. And the person said, we don't know what happened, but somebody went ahead of you and paid your tuition fees. To this day, I don't know who did that. But I know this was a leap of faith that I took my brothers and sisters, and I would have seen what God had done right throughout my years going through all the rigors, going through courses, passing exams, getting on honors list. What could this be? This has to be God. So I called my move of faith that it is when I am at my lowest. The text that I used as my reference, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I want to thank God for the way he led me. When I had nothing, he opened doors to show me that this is the way. And my song that I use as my inspiration is Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. I've seen what he had done. Where I lived in Ingleside, Sister Yvette Johnson, where I lived without paying rent, that had to be God. How I drove from point A to point B on gaslight, going on God's mission. That has to be the hand of God. I want to encourage somebody this morning. I want to encourage somebody today. Take a leap of faith. If God is calling you to something, he has already prepared the way for you to be successful. I ask that when I took that leap of faith, even just to point out something, my wife Nadine just could not believe what I did. She sent my youngest son, Elder Sefton, 
sent him with me. So both of us were living in Mandeville. And how God provided, how God did what he did, it only has to be his hands. I ask that if we take that leap of faith, trusting in God, he will work things out and see us through the end. God bless you. Amen. Wow, what a testimony. Let us pray. Our loving and compassionate Father, we thank you for being in this space where we can call upon your holy and matchless name. We thank you for being in the land of the living. We know there's nothing good that we have done. It's only because of your grace and your mercy. We thank you for having been with us throughout the night, for giving us a good night's rest. And as we come this morning, Father, to worship your name, first let me ask that you remove everything that is unlikely so that this prayer can receive up to you like sweet incense, as I petition on behalf of the brethren and pray for all the varying prayer requests that is in the garden of prayer. Father, we just want to thank you for being God. There's none like you. Buddha, Allah, Confucius, Selassie. As far as we know, their bones are still in, in, in the grave or wherever they were laid. But we know you are in the heavens of heavens. We know Jesus who came and died for us, is sitting at the right hand of God, making intercession on our behalf. So we know you are alive and well, and you are a God who can hear our groanings. You are a God who can hear our mutterings. You are a God who will hear and answer as you see fit and according to your will. So we thank you for being our God. We thank you for being our Savior, our friend, our redeem, Redeemer. We thank you for being truly the God of all gods. This morning, Father, as I come and as I petition and be off, as I pray rather for those prayer requests that is in the garden of prayer. Father, just by chance, I click one yesterday. And somebody laid this prayer request on behalf of a church sister who has been going through varying medical issues. As far as I remember, she had stomach ulcer, she had sickle cell, she had um, pain in her ab abdomen, anus, back, side, you name it, Father. She has all these issues contending with. But Father, we know <clears throat> that you are still in the healing business. We know you are still a great physician. We know you understand when your children are in pain. We know these things are not from you, but from the evil one. So, Father, as I present this sister to you this morning, that you will be near and dear to her situation. We know we're already on the case for that matter. And we pray that you will grant her healing, grant her restoration. But, Father, we pray not only for physical healing, but we pray for her for spiritual healing of our, of our mind, of our soul. By extension, Father, we will present, we want to pray for other persons who are going through health challenges. And we pray that you will grant them both the physical and the spiritual healing. In the same breath, Father, we heard 
we, we want to give you the praise because yesterday the news came that Pastor Williams um, had to be rushed to the hospital. And immediately you took over the case file. And we understand that the medical procedure that he did further was successful and he's recovering. And we thank you for that, Amen. Father. And we pray that you will, you will restore him to full health. Right. Father, there are varying and wide issues in the prayer request. And Father, we ask that you will attend to them as you see fit. So persons who are asking for a financial breakthrough, Father, we know that a cat on a thousand ill belongs to you, Father. We know you can provide the finances to take care of all the bills that these persons are requesting, Father. And we ask that you will grant it as you see is fit. People are, are requesting prayer for marital problems, Father. We know you're the great problem solver, Father. You're the great counselor. In fact, you're the counselor of all counselors. And we Amen. pray that, Father, Amen. that you will attend to these marriages that are going through varying challenges, Father. And we pray that you will grant them restoration and that the individuals in these marriages, Father, will look to you first, then they come together, Father, because we know sometimes that's a problem that facing marriages because the, 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 the upward connection is broken down and ends and ends the the, the, the horizontal connection is in problem. So we pray that that, will, that, that that process, that methodology will be employed. We pray for those persons who are seeking employment. Father, you can provide for these persons. And until you, they, they get employment, Father, we pray that they will find, make themselves useful so that um, in turn, as it, and that they will prepare for these, um, these um, jobs when you provide it for them. We pray for persons who are battling loneliness, companionship. <laughs> You're the great companion, Father. And we pray and we ask that you will be near and dear to these individuals in our churches, we have quite a few widowers and widow. And we pray, Father, when the lights are turned off, when everybody has gone to bed, and when they are all alone, Father, that you will be their company, that you will be that still small voice that speak to them, that encourage them, that give them hope. Oh, Father, we look forward to that day when these issues, these challenges that faces your people will be of the past. We look forward to that day, Father, when you shall put in your appearance, where sin and sinners will be no more. We look forward to that day, Father, when you will burst the eastern sky. Father, help us to remain faithful. Help us not to be so busy working that we are cast away. Equally, help us not to be sitting idle where work is need to be done. Mm -hmm. Help us to put our hands on deck. And as we go into the, the, the upcoming um, series, Father, that we will play our part in the advancement of, 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 the, of the message. Mm -hmm. Help us to remain faithful, Father, that when you shall come, none of us in the hearing of my voice, those online now and those that will watch after, will be missing 
from being part of the new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Father, help us to be, to be resolute. Help us to stay the course. Though Satan toss us to and fro, mm -hmm. help us to stay on the straight and narrow path. To get others ready for your kingdom. We pray this morning for the, the one that you have chosen, Sister Karen Morgan, to give the church. We pray as that she speak, our hearts will be blessed. We pray that you will anoint her and that at the end of her message, our souls will have been watered. We thank you for this early morning gathering. Amen. We thank you for the, the persons who put the program together. And we pray, Father, that we are, we look forward, Father, for that day where we come from the country, where we come to the city in the new Jerusalem to worship you. Bless, keep, and abide with us now. We and save us all in your kingdom. This I pray for the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Good, good morning, family and friends. No. I have the wonderful task of introducing someone that I know very well. In fact, I have known this person for the past 38 years. I will keep you in suspense no longer. She is my adorable wife, Mrs. Karen Morgan. She has been a tremendous help me to me, a woman of God. We pray and have devotion together. And she always puts God first in her life. And I have learned from her example to always consult with God in everything we do, no matter how trivial or momentous these decisions are. She is a godly wife, a mother, and grandmother, and most of all, a devoted follower of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and soon coming King. I now present to you, Mrs. Karen Verona Morgan. Faith is when you believe in things you truly can see. The assurance all things hope for Oh Lord, I need it too Faith of our fathers like Abraham Lord, I need it too you open my eyes to to 
Greetings, brothers and sisters. I want to first of all say thank you to Sister Karen Watson Brown for allowing me to stand and to spend a moment with you today just to present a word from the Lord. I also want to thank my beloved husband for his kind introduction. So I was so impressed with Pastor's testimony. I almost felt like I didn't need to speak anymore because he has spoken on the same subject which I'm about to present to you today. Um, I will be doing a short reading from the councils on stewardship. And the topic is our bountiful benefactor which fits right in with what we just heard from Pastor Shaw. I almost said Car, pardon me, who just told us how God provided miraculously for him so that he could attend college to become a pastor. Um, I am sure that that came straight from the throne room of heaven, and we are very grateful on your behalf, Pastor. So we're going to talk about our bountiful benefactor. Before I start the reading, I just want to um, define what a benefactor is. A benefactor is one who gives gifts or help to, to a person or to a cause. And when we speak about our bountiful benefactor, we're talking about one who gives plentiful who is generous, who is abundant, and who gives sufficient. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So Sister White writes, The power of God is manifested in the beating of the heart in the action of the lungs, and in the living currents that circulate through the thousand different channels of the body. We are indebted to him for every moment of existence and for all of the comforts of life. The powers and abilities that elevate man above the lower creation are the endowment of the creator. He loads us up with benefits. We are indebted to him for the food that we eat, the water that we drink, the clothes we wear, the air we breathe. Without his special providence, the air would be filled with, the, with pestilence and poison. He is a bountiful benefactor and a preserver. And I just want to pause to just um, talk about an instance or two that we have, my husband and I have experienced 
horrible air quality. I remember going to Mexico City and believe me, that was one of the worst experiences I've had where pollution is concerned. My nose was burning, my eyes were burning and daytime was practically dark back in those days. It was in the early seventies when Mexico had just started to become a, a gasoline manufacturer and they would burn off the excess fuel and all the fumes would be spread all around the city. And it was quite a horrible experience. And only God kept me from not um, having some lung disease or something. So I thank my God that he is our preserver indeed. Continuing the reading, the sun which shines upon the earth and glorifies all nature, the weird solemn radiance of the moon, the glories of the firmament spangled with stars, the showers that refresh the land and cause vegetation to flourish, the precious things of nature in all their varied richness, the lofty trees, the shrubs and plants, the waving grain, the blue sky, the green earth, the changes of day and night, the renewing of the seasons, all speak to man of his creator's love. And notice she says, the creator's love. He has linked us to himself by all these tokens in heaven and in earth. He watches over us with more tenderness than does a mother over an afflicted child. And Psalm 103 says, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. What an amazing God. Amen. As we are continually receiving the blessings of God, so are we to be continually giving. And I just want to pause to remind us that it is the stewardship department along with prayer department who is presenting this prayer meeting this morning. And so we're just reminding you that as we continually receive the blessings of the Lord, so we are to be continually giving. So Sister White says, when the heavenly benefactor ceases to give to us, then we may be excused from giving, for he shall not bestow anything. God has never left us without evidence of his love. In that, in that he did us good. We are sustained every moment by God's care and upheld by his power. He spreads our tables with food, Pastor. He gives us peaceful and refreshing sleep. Weekly, he brings us to the Sabbath that we may rest from our temporal labor and worship him in his own house. He has given us his word to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. In its sacred pages, we find the counsels of wisdom. And as oft we lift our hearts to him in penitence and faith, in other words, we pray, he grants us the blessing of his grace. Above all else, in the infinite gift of God's dear, is the infinite gift of God's dear son, through whom all other blessings for this life and for the life to come is found and we thank god for that thank you lord for your son jesus continuing surely goodness and mercy attend us at every step not till we wish the infinite father to cease bestowing his gifts on us should we impatiently exclaim is there no end to giving not only should we faithfully render to God our tithes, which he claims as his own, but we should bring a tribute to his treasury as an offering of gratitude. Let us with joyful hearts bring to our creator the first fruits of all his bounty, our choicest possessions, our best and our holiest service. But the Lord does not need our offerings. We cannot enrich him by our gifts. Says the psalmist, 
all things come of thee and of thine own have we given thee. And I pause here to make a comment in that just this two days ago, my Bible study group were reading about Solomon and his work with the building of the temple. And we saw how his father, David, provided everything, tons of gold and silver and bronze and precious stones and wood and workmen, everything that Solomon needed to build the temple. And the Israelites themselves gave from what they have. David gave from his personal treasure trove so that they, they were overwhelmed with the amount of material that was volunteered and given for the building of the, the Solomon's temple. And I remember in the prayer, David reminded his son and, and the people of Israel that it is God who gave all these gifts and we were just giving back a little bit of what he has given us. And that's what he requires of us. And not only does he promise us that he will give us all that we need, he said, when we give back to him, he will again bless us. He said he will pour out so much blessing that we would not have room to receive it. And that is how bountiful our benefactor is. Thank God for his many blessings on us. And may we always remember to give back. Now, Paul has to admonish us to behave ourselves in that Paul says, and now I'm again reading from Sister White, Paul sought to uproot the plant of selfishness from the hearts of his brethren. And in speaking to the Corinthians, he pointed out to them the sacrifice that Christ has made on our behalves. And he said, he told them for the character of Christ cannot be complete when self-love and co covetousness are retained in us. And to quote from 2 Corinthians 8, verse 8 and 9, I speak not by commandment, he said, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes, he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. And Sister White continues, the spirit of liberality is the spirit of heaven. The spirit of selfishness is the spirit of Satan. And I want to add to what Sister White has just given us in that I want to ask the Lord humbly and to teach me to practice gratitude by myself being a bountiful benefactor. Let me joyfully give back to him and to my fellow man. And may we pray that the Lord will teach us to practice gratitude for the marvelous, bountiful benefactor that he is. May we be bountiful beneficiaries of his grace. I thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this privilege we have had this morning to come to you and to pray and to reflect on your mercies and your grace and your bountiful provisions that you have afforded us. We thank you this morning for the prayers that have been offered for your saints, for your church, for our neighboring countries, and even for our own country. We thank you and we believe, Lord, that you have heard the prayer of faith for the different circumstances of each and every one of us as we will continue in prayer with you today. We thank you, Lord, and we believe that you have heard us and that you know our needs and that you will minister to the different situations of our lives. We thank you that you have blessed us and that you have called us to be good stewards. And we pray, Lord, that we will so do today 
and live a life that is pleasing unto you, so that when you shall come, we will all have a place with you in your eternal kingdom. And so we recommit our lives to you, our time, our talent, our treasure, and our body temple to be used to your name's honor and glory. Take charge of all that we do and say today, Lord, and keep us in constant prayer throughout this day and even forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray that today the Lord will bless us and keep us. The Lord will make his face to shine upon us and the Lord will turn his face towards us and you will give us peace today. In Jesus' name, amen. By means of announcements, we are thankful for the stewardship department that have led us throughout this morning's um, prayer and fasting. Remember, we continue in prayer and fasting today up towards uh, midday. And let us keep all the different considerations in our prayers as we pray one for each other, for our church, for our country, for our neighbors in Haiti, and for all the different conditions that we see happening around us in the world. We join again on Sabbath at church. We pray that you'll be able to join us. Also remember our young people, our pathfinders who go out to camp, and no doubt members of our church family who will be traversing different places. Pray for God's leading and his protection. Remember the upcoming series that Ella Stewart mentioned earlier starts on April 21st. We'll start inviting our families and friends to join us for this program. Pray that God will bless you today and that will, God will keep us all faithful unto him. Have a good and wonderful day. Amen. Where you lead me, I will follow. When you seek me, show me the way I will go. I will go to the streets, I will go to the lanes, I will go where you lead, I will go in Jesus' name, I will take off a sin and shame, or I will answer just the same, when Jesus calls out my name, I will go, I will go. Teach me, Lord, I will go. In my work, send me, Lord, I will go. And in the marketplace, guide me, I'll go. I will go all the way. Resources now.